Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. I pray as always that we find you in good health and in good spirits. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, our God, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Way Maker, our Provider, our Healer, our Deliverer, you are the one that grants us peace, you grant us favor, you grant us abundant mercies and great compassions. We bless you today, we honor you today, we exalt you today, we glorify you today, the God of our salvation. You are the Almighty God and beside you there is no other. Hallelujah, there's none that can compare to you, there's none that should even dare to try to compare to you, O oh God, woe unto them that try to compare themselves to you and dethrone you from your rightful place as God of the universe. We bless you today in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. He is the almighty God and besides him, there is no other. Don't go looking anywhere else. Don't try to fashion a God out of gold and silver or wood or stone and call it your God. Just go to the source of everything that is and you'll find the God that you're looking for. Amen. Today we continue our journey along the path of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. We are on the first of the last three weeks in our series. Amen. We've been talking about prayer literally all year long. Amen. And I don't know about you, but it has been a blessing to my soul. Amen. And so today, um, um, sorry, this week, next week, and the week after we will be finishing up our series on praying on prayer and we're ending it with the um collection of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues so we're going to continue with that we haven't talked too much about the controversial issues of praying in tongues because what's the point amen there's no point to be debating about it when the bible is so clear would you agree amen why debate about things that the bible is so clear on if you have not experienced it then I can understand that you may have some questions. Amen. If you're in a place or um, in a, a location where it's not being manifested, I can understand why you would have questions. Amen. But the Bible is given to us to answer any questions that we may have. Amen. And so is the avenue of prayer. Whatever it is that you don't understand about the ways of God or the will of God, simply go to God in prayer. Amen and he will guide you to the truth. He'll lead and guide you into the truth. The Bible says that he has given us of his spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. And so whatever it is that you may have questions about, he will lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. And so we're going to continue um, sharing about praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. It's the same thing. Amen. It is of the spirit. We're not talking about corporate prayer where there's a need for an interpreter. We're not talking about corporate prayer where divers tongues could be operating. And what that is, is that a believer yields themselves to the Holy Spirit who begins to speak through them. Amen. In a language unknown to the speaker but known to a hearer. And I'll give you an example of that. If you are traveling in, let's say, um, Mexico, South America, a Hispanic speaking country, and you are there on a mission, and the Spirit of the Lord begins to speak through you in what's called a diverse tongue, or tongues and tongues of uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues, it is an unknown tongue, absolutely, and it is unknown to you, or yes, to you as the speaker, but it will be known or made known to the hearer, amen? So we're not talking about those um, operations of the spirit. Th what we're talking about specifically when, well, when I'm talking about praying in tongues and praying in the spirit, I'm talking about what happens in your personal prayer 
life. I'm talking about you being shut away alone with God. Amen. And so even in that arena of you being alone with God, you could possibly pray um, in an unknown tongue, but you could also pray in um, prophetic utterances, tongues and interpretations of tongues, if God will give you the interpretation. Amen. It all works by the spirit. And sometimes it can seem a little mind boggling to the point where somebody says, ah, just forget it. It's too difficult. No, nothing about God is difficult. Amen. The Bible says his word is not grievous. In other words, it's not too heavy to be born. The word is near you and in your mouth. Amen. And so there's nothing difficult about it. What might be difficult is us receiving the very simple things that God provides for us. Amen. So my encouragement to you is simply receive, believe and receive. Amen. So today I want to talk about one of the benefits as well. We've been going down the list of the benefits um, of, of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. Amen. And so another one that I want to talk on a little bit about is um, the benefit of speaking mysteries unto God. First Corinthians chapter 14 talks about when you pray in an unknown tongue, you speak not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands you, howbeit in the spirit you speak mysteries. Now we talked about a few weeks ago how those mysteries are not mysteries to God because he knows everything. He is omniscient. In other words, he knows everything. There's nothing that is known that God does not know about. Amen. He is the all-knowing God. So we're not talking about him um, needing mysteries to be revealed it, to him. We're talking about mysteries being revealed to us. Hallelujah. Mysteries being revealed to the speaker, which would be you and I when we are praying in tongues. This is something that is not too much talked about or touched on, but I'm going to touch on it today. Amen. Because in Romans, and we're going to go there in a moment, Romans chapter 8, it gives us the springboard, amen, as to the benefit of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. We speak mysteries, amen. And in us speaking mysteries, God reveals the answer to the mystery. I, I don't know about you, but I like putting puzzles together. Haven't had the time to do it for a long time. Amen. I'm going to have to get me a really good puzzle and sit down and start putting it together. I haven't had time to really put a puzzle together for quite some time. But I enjoy connecting things together. That's part of my wiring. I enjoy connecting things together. If they don't connect together somehow... Um, for me, you've lost me. I'm like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. That makes no sense to my brain at all. Amen. But that's just how I'm wired. And so when, when we're speaking mysteries, we're actually connecting the thought, the, the thoughts and the dots is what I was going to say. We're actually connecting spiritual dots together until they make a clear picture of what God is actually saying to us. That is a huge benefit of praying in tongues or praying in the spirit. It's huge. And I'm going to show you why. Go to Romans chapter 8 with me. Romans chapter 8. It is huge because we need to know how to connect the dots in the spirit. And the way that you connect the dots in the spirit, one of the most beneficial ways of connecting the dots in the spirit is praying in tongues or praying in the spirit. Now, mind you, you must be a born again believer in order to do this. You absolute, I'm talking about to do it the Bible way and to do it God's way. Amen. You must be a born again believer. Jesus has to be the Lord of your life. And then you, at that point, you are filled with the spirit. But then there is a constant infilling of the spirit. Amen. Let me ask you this question. How often do you drink 
a glass of water. I know there's quite a few people that don't like the taste of water. It's so bland. It's so boring. Ooh, I can't stand it. You know, maybe the texture drives them away from it or what have you, but eventually your body's going to need some water. <laughs> Amen. So again, my question is, how often do you drink water? Do you drink water every day? The answer is probably yes. Do you drink more than eight ounces of water every day? The answer more than likely is yes. Do you drink more than 16 ounces of water every day? The answer is probably yes. And the question again is, why do you drink water? Do you drink water just because water is available? Or do you drink water because you know it serves a purpose? because you know it meets a need, right? You know that water is beneficial for the livelihood of your physical well-being. Amen. And so it is with the Spirit. When we drink of the Spirit, the Bible says, don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess in Ephesians, but be being filled with the Spirit. You are to drink of the Spirit every day. Amen. And we drink of the Spirit when we pray in the Spirit. Romans 8, verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses. See, we have weaknesses. That word weaknesses in the Greek actually relates to not having the ability to produce the desired results in a situation. We're talking about connecting the dots. Amen. So that word weaknesses means not being, being able to produce the desired results in a situation. So with that thought in mind, let's read it again. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our inabilities to produce the desired results, because there are times when we don't have the ability to bring about the desired results of a situation. Amen. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I'm going to read that again. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There are times... We've been talking about prayer all year, basically all year. And there are times when we don't know how to pray or what to pray, what we should pray for as we ought, not how to pray. What should I pray? Excuse me. What we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself, the spirit, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit maketh intercessions for us, not on our, not for us. Really, basically, it means with us. He is the, called the paraclete. He's called the one to come alongside, to take hold together with us in a situation or circumstance. He's not going to do it for you and he's not going to make you. He's the one that comes alongside to help us. He's our helper. Amen. He's the one who helps us in our infirmities. He's the one who helps us in our weaknesses. He is the one who helps us in our inabilities to produce results. It doesn't matter what the situation is. When we can't bring about the desired results, the Holy Spirit comes alongside as the paraclete to help us bring about those desired results. Making intercession for us. It's not actually for us. It's with us. Making intercession with us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Why? Because we don't know what we don't. We know not what we should pray for as we ought. That's why. Because we know not what we should pray for as we, as we ought to. I know I can't possibly be the only one on the planet. Who has ever been in a situation where I did not know what to pray? I didn't know what to say. Paul goes on in verse 31 and he says, What shall we then say to these things? Have you ever been in a situation where you were wondering and you were just speechless? You didn't know what to say in the situation. You didn't know what to say about what was going on. It was overwhelming. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was overwhelming. Amen. And you didn't know what to say to these things. And then we say, if God be for us, who can be against us? That's But the God that he's talking about that is for us and not against us is the same one that's helping us in our prayer. All of this connects together. These verses are not outlying one by themselves. They connect together. They are a collective thing thought of God to help us understand that the Holy Spirit will come alongside with us. He'll help us. He'll pray with us to connect the dots, the thoughts and the dots so that we can understand the mystery that has been spoken in our spirit that we might know what is the will of God in our present circumstance. That was a mouthful, but it was still the truth. We don't always know what to pray. We're, we, in this time that we live in today, we certainly sometimes don't know what to pray. The news is changing things every day. Every day is something else. Every day is something new. Every day, you know, turn the news off. Just turn the news off. I bet you if you turn the news off and you start telling them, unless you start reporting something positive, I'm not watching the news anymore. I bet when those ratings go down, they'll change what they're talking about. But since they've got everybody so engaged in the TV because of COVID-19 and the pandemic, their ratings are through the roof. They're making billions of dollars reporting on this mess that's not building you up, not increasing your faith, causing you to doubt God and wonder where is God and how come God is allowing this to happen and stirring up your faith to your uh, faith so that it's a lack of faith instead of an increase in faith and the Holy Spirit has been given to us for times such as this for we don't know how to pray or what to pray as we ought to but he certainly does he certainly knows what to pray he certainly knows how to intercede he certainly knows how to move on the inside of us so that we can begin to speak mysteries unto God. And as we speak those mysteries unto God, then God in turn begins to connect the thoughts and the dots so that we get a clear picture of what God says about the situation. Mm-hmm. That is really how it works. That's why it's a threat. Praying in the spirit is a threat. It's a benefit to the kingdom of God, but it's a threat. Otherwise, it's a threat to the kingdom of darkness. It is a threat because once you understand the mind of Christ and the will of God, and you begin to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself, you will begin to see God moving more in your circumstances and your situations. You'll be, at, you'll be more at peace. You'll be more thankful. You'll be more mindful of the things of the spirit. You'll be more, uh, more able to set your thoughts on things above instead of things of this earth. But as long as this earth and, and the magnetic pull of the earth can draw you into its drama, the less you're going to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit who knows the truth about every situation and circumstance. It's just that simple. There's nothing difficult about this. It is simply a matter of you simply saying to God, I want to be filled with your spirit. I want the benefits of being filled with the spirit. Please fill me with your spirit. And you can ask him that and then yield yourself. <laughs> Don't ask him and then tighten up like a dry sponge. No, yield yourself to him like a wet sponge. Amen. And just soak up the presence of God and receive the infilling of the spirit of God. Yes. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Why? Because of the great benefits that come with it. Amen. The Holy Spirit has been sent to do a work in our lives. He is a minister unto us for the kingdom of God and praying in the spirit or praying in tongues is part of his ministry to the body of Christ. Amen. So again, in Romans eight twenty six, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I know, you know, and I know, I know 
that there are times that I don't know what I should pray for as I ought. But I'm telling you from my own experience, when I begin to yield to the Spirit and I begin to pray in the Spirit, I begin to understand what I should pray for in that given situation and circumstance. And God begins to connect the thoughts and the thoughts, the thoughts and the dots that I might clearly see what he is saying to me in my circumstance and in my situation. It's a benefit and it's a blessing to the body of Christ. And I will not and I cannot recant to God be the glory. I pray that something was said to encourage your heart, your hope, your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God and in God alone. Next week, we're going to continue with the blessings of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. Until then, may God richly bless you. And I pray as the promise is in the book of Acts that he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.